Um, hey there. Haven't made a video in a minute, so this should be cool. Short, brief, maybe. You know, I like to talk. So I'll try to keep this under two hours. <laughs> this morning I came in, like this morning I get uh, to work at 20 minutes after 5, somewhere thereabouts. Oh, dark 30. Yeah. Of course, I had to get up at old dark 30 to get here by old dark 30. So, I get here in D.C. and for whatever reason, there are zero to no parking spaces in D.C. on the street. The street parking is uh, taken all around the Woody's building, all around the Lincoln Square location. 20 minutes after 5, the street parking is taken. So I was a little frustrated this morning because uh, I had to drive around and find a parking space and small thing, got the car parked, life is good, I can see it from my window. <laughs> I get here in the building where I work and on the night shift there's a, a young gentleman that works uh, at the front desk uh, regarding the building, which is probably pretty quiet so it's, it gives him an opportunity to study. He's in college and he's working on his degree. Now very rarely do I actually stop off to speak to the gentleman, uh, to actually hold a conversation with him. I do stop off to speak every morning when I see him. And so this morning I stopped off, went over and, and actually hit one over to his desk to actually have a conversation with him to, to vent about, hey, the parking around here is getting crazy and we laughed about that. And, he was upset because he had gotten a $100 ticket last night because he hadn't put the new uh, sticker on his tags and you know, we talked about how we thought $100 was kind of excessive. Clearly DC is making its money on passing out parking tickets all hours of the night. And uh, so I started to talk about you know why I don't catch Metro, how I'm not really comfortable with Metro like I used to be. and. Um, you know, mentioning some of the violence that's taking place on Metro and I'm, you know, telling him that early in the morning maybe it's just not a good idea for me as a woman to be hanging out, walking around um, from the Metro Center back here to the building because um, uh, the Metro Center has really, really gotten kind of busy to say the least. And I'm sure Metro doesn't really care if I get cracked in the skull as long as they get their money. So as I was having this conversation with him, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, but by my next video, I will, because I pride myself on knowing people's names. He made a statement that I thought was quite interesting. He said that he believes that uh, violence is inbred in our DNA, in black people's DNA. And the statement took me by surprise. So I him why do you think this and he explained um, how whenever he has to go outside and clear the side of the building uh, the guys cuss him out and everything like that and all he's really trying to do is his job which I totally understand his frustration and uh, he explained some of the violence that takes place in Africa I didn't ask what part of Africa he, he hailed from but he went on to mention that if you're doing well or you're attempting to do well that uh, people do voodoo and put these spells on you and, and attempt to kill you or crush your family because you're doing well and it's something that is inbred with blacks. It's just in our DNA. We're just violent. Just me. Just inbred for violence. It's early in the morning. Um, I didn't have all of my thinking facilities with me. So I really had a hard time like combating what he was not even combating. Huh? That's there you go, violent combating. Uh -huh. But I didn't have, uh, I couldn't come up with why I didn't totally agree with that. And then I realized like I just couldn't come up with why I didn't agree with it because as he was talking, I started to think about some of the situations that I've ever actually watched. When I watch. Uh, watch us when I watch black people when I'm just sitting around just watching people because I like to people watch and I have seen some of the most violent situations take place 
out of nowhere for no reason. Um, like at the at the salon, uh, women will get upset, especially black women, because they believe that they were the next person in line to get their hair done or their nails done when they just walked in the door, not knowing the situation around them or who came in first or what what was said or done or what appointments are made. And I have watched these black women cuss out other women, the salon owner and, and th things like that. Excuse me. Uh, violence breaking out in, in churches. Now I don't go to, or I haven't been to every church on the planet. But I do know the few very quiet white churches I've ever attended. Even when there's some strife and and the congregation may be upset with each other, in some of the quiet white churches I've gone to, there's no throwing shoes at each other or ripping up uh, choir robes or throwing xylophones at each other but in a black church you can trust and believe somewhere between the sermon and excuse me getting to the car there's going to be some altercation uh, just recently here down at one of the stores in this area a fight broke out because and this one girl stepped in front of the other in line not knowing that the lady was with her daughter and, 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 this, and yes these are all black people now I'm not saying that all black people are just totally violent because I don't know all black people but I do know when the when the gentleman downstairs mentioned it it did give me food for thought I have been in a lot of communities I have been in a lot of areas I have visited almost all 50 states uh, and I have I have traveled abroad and I'm sure every neighborhood every area has its its violence and things like that but um, Af uh, African Americans or blacks are, are more wanting to To, to to be ready to be ready um, to, to sway on somebody to 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 push somebody to to curse somebody out to it, there's rarely a calmness in a room if you have a bunch of African Americans together or whatever and I'm not stereotyping this is just something that I know from experience If I'm sitting in a room with a bunch of Asians or a bunch of Hispanics or a bunch of white people, um, there's less tension in the room. I mean, if you're just sitting in the room, if I'm in the, if I'm going to the DMV and I'm sitting on the side where there's a lot of non-blacks, uh, a lot of times they're laughing and joking or reading or whatever like that. But if I'm sitting on the side where there might be a whole slew of African Americans, there's fussing, huffing and puffing and things like that. There's some places that you should just know it's going to be slow. But, not that I'm condoning what the brother said, that DNA, uh, that our DNA uh, perpetuates violence. But, maybe we should, maybe we should, we should test it. I mean, just like, I think what I'm going to do is just go and kind of hang out in even more areas so I can so I can see what what happens what the, the like there's a, a boiling point in blacks where I guess we feel like any minute our rights are gonna be taken from us or or I don't know maybe we are on edge 